Hi, I'm George. Hey, I'm Tarek. And today we're talking about drugs. Am I? I don't know. Really <laughs> What do people usually mean when they're talking about drugs? What people commonly refer to as drugs are mainly the illicit substances. For example, the most commonly used um, illicit substance amongst young people, that's um, 13 to 24 year olds, would be cannabis. Okay. Um, but obviously, when you're talking about drugs, that does also include legal substances as well, such as caffeine. Prescription um, drugs as well, which you can get over, um, you can get from the pharmacy and which are prescribed from a doctor. In general, they are talking about things such as heroin, um, cocaine and other illicit substances. Can all drugs be unsafe? Any kind of drugs, there is an element of risk with it. That goes for prescription medication, that goes from illicit substances, and it also goes from other substances that might not, that the average person might not look at and think, oh yes, that's a drug. A lot of young people are, when they are going out, they are mixing now um, caffeine and alcohol. Caffeine alone is a stimulant, so it actually raises your heartbeat, it raises your blood pressure, and alcohol mm. is a depressant which actually slows down the way the body works and slows down the heart rate. Yeah. Now, if you mix those two substance t substances together, it causes a lot of strain on the heart. Before you actually decide to take a substance, I'd always say, do your research. Even if it's a painkiller and you have a headache, doing a little bit of research and finding out oh, maybe an alternative. Actually, I might be dehydrated today and that's why I have a headache, so I don't need to take the painkiller instead. Um, if you're going out and you're, think and you're feeling a bit nervous or you might not be the most quote-unquote outgoing person initially when you're meeting people you might think okay let me get a bit of Dutch courage in me and yeah, have sure. a drink and you know so it hides the fact that actually maybe there's a little bit of anxiety social anxiety there that yeah. you can actually work through a lot of the times you do find that people are dealing with things that they have gone through in life yeah and, and it's those underlying reasons isn't it that are so much part of it at the same time what can you do if you are feeling pressured by friends or people you hang around with to take drugs? Like what, what might help you out there? Developing a really strong relationship with yourself is very important, first and foremost. Okay. Understanding what you like and what you don't like to do. Yeah. What you want to try and what you don't want to try. Creating a plan for yourself and actually giving yourself reasons as to why you want to try that and why you don't want to try that. Yeah. And actually understanding. So when you're in those scenarios, you can't play it back to you and actually say, no, I don't want to, for example, start smoking, not because of what everybody else is saying, but actually I like playing sports, so I don't want to get my fitness, yeah. you know. And if you feel that you can't actually express that to your friends or to the people that are pressuring you, then you have to understand that actually they may not be a healthy person in my environment. If that is the case, then I advise any person to actually go seek the help of an adult. All schools now across the UK, you should have a safeguarding officer. If you're pressured into doing anything that you don't feel comfortable with, please go have a talk to your safeguarding officer. Yeah. But one thing I implore all young people to do is actually make use of the services around you. Even if you're feeling in a, you're in a situation of isolation and you feel that, you know what, I may go back to old habits that have stopped. Yeah. You know, you may have gone through recovery, may have got come out the other side and you're now um, substance free, but you're afraid of like slipping back. Yeah. You can access the service and you can receive help. There are people around you there to support you. If you feel that you're not ready to go access a service, go talk to your family members. Even if you haven't talked to them in a while, just having that one conversation, even if it's just for yourself to let things off your chest, very important yeah and it could be a scenario where you don't know what to do they may be able to give you advice even to your peers and things like that reach out yeah connect if you are if you do need help with your substance misuse issue and you're unsure talk about it services such as childline are very important it's a service that a young person can access out of hours they can actually yeah. access at a time of crisis yeah and it means that they can actually re receive support immediately. And yeah. I think that is very important because as soon as you pick up the phone, you talk to an individual again, you are talking to someone that is empathetic. So what are some of the risks of taking drugs, so both physically and emotionally? That's the quote unquote scary thing about substances is that it can affect an individual differently. So when we talk about physiological effects or physical effects, taking any kind of substances, for instance, is the simple fact that it does change how your mind works. It yeah. is a psychoactive substance. Although you may think, actually, I'm doing okay, I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine, you'll notice the simple fact that there's a change in, the pa in your pattern of thinking and it will have a, ne a 
a negative effect on your well-being, yeah. be it short term or long term. If you are suffering from high blood pressure anyway, and then you actually end up taking, for instance, cannabis. Cannabis is a very um, is quite is quite unique in the fact that it does act as a depressant and a stimulant. If you stand right. up, your heart rate will increase. If you sit down, your heart rate will slow down. And that's why a okay. lot of people, when they are actually under the influence of cannabis, if they stand up very quickly, they get a hot flush, they feel dizzy, and they right. feel, you know, and they may feel like as if they're a little faint and things like that. Mm. All those, all those short term effects, depending on the situation, can be very risky. And because it, again, it varies between person, person to person, mm. you can't be sure how it's going to affect you on the night. If you are, for, for instance, indulging in an illicit substance, you are having to buy it off a drug dealer or someone that at least knows a drug dealer. Simply because of that, you're putting yourself in an environment that you would have never been in otherwise. And you don't know this person. This person has no loyalty towards you. You know, a lot of young people, especially with cannabis, will say, I'm using it to medicate. I'm using it as a medicine. I would say, is that a doctor? If you went to speak to yeah. a doctor, and you ask them, could you give me advice to do with what I'm going through? I very much doubt that cannabis would be the first thing they'll go yeah, to. Yeah, sure. You know? They'll probably suggest, for example, if you're feeling anxious or you're going through bouts of depression, they'll probably would suggest that you do receive some sort of counselling or you do go talk to someone instead of just giving you even prescription medication to help yeah. you with, your situ with the scenario. So again, it is about being able to understand that with any kind of substance use, regardless if it's illicit or this prescription, there is a risk around it. There is a health yeah. risk that there is there. It is a psychoactive substance. It does change the way your mind works. It's always to understand that if I've been given prescription medication, this is the reason why. Yeah. This is for how long. And actually, this is the reason why I should stop because yeah. I can actually get an addiction. If I get an addiction to uh, prescription medication, a lot of the times people then go looking for the alternative. The alternative to prescription grade opiates is street grade heroin. Yeah. You know, and that is again mixed with things that will, you can't actually know unless you are the person, even the person dealing it to you doesn't know. If you think you have got a drug problem or an addiction, like what can you do? Where, where can you turn for help? That's the great thing about Childline is that it covers, it almost, it covers the cracks that we cannot actually see. So when I am not at work, when the services are shut down, when the school is not there to help that person, when the person doesn't feel able to go and talk to the people that are close to them, Childline is always there. Yeah, And I think absolutely. that's the important thing about that. It's just that it gives a young person a choice. So if you feel that you do not have the choice, as a young person, just always understand, I do have Childline. Thanks so much for coming, Tarek. Likewise, thanks for having me. And um, we'll see you next time. Bye.